second artifact that I will be doing is my federalism paper. And my task was to analyze a contemporary issue, and not only analyze it, but determine who should make decisions on the issue. Should it be the state government of the United States or the national government? And in order to do this assignment, I had to learn a concept known as federalism. So what is federalism exactly? Do you guys know anything about federal, federal government? Brian, do you know what federalism is? Yeah, I think of federalism meaning like the national government. Yes, yes, yes. But it's a little trickier than that. And it's the, really the distribution of power between the state and the national government. Because when we think of federal, we think national, even though when the founding fathers outlined the concept, they wanted it to be state and national. So during this assignment, I had to not only select a contemporary issue, but decide who has the authority to decide over it. So I said, you know, I'll choose the death penalty. And then my thesis became, because each state has a different interpretation of cruel and unusual punishments, then it's their obligation to interpret the words of the Constitution and make the decisions regarding the death penalty. And here's just a little snippet of my work. Raise your hand if you guys heard of Stanley Williams. He was executed in 2005. You guys heard of him? Well, they, but, but let's be professional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe more it, was a, it was his commonly known nickname, though. You're absolutely right. So, in his execution, what happened was because medical officials cannot actually lethally inject someone, and they have the most experience or most knowledge about anatomy, so state prison workers actually put him to death. And they put a needle through him. And they took three or four times before they actually killed him. So that's about 45 minutes before he actually died. And it reignited this debate of cruel and unusual punishments. And once again, the words cruel and unusual have been interpreted loosely. And because the founding fathers didn't say, this is what a cruel and unusual punishment looks like, then guess what? It means the states have to use a little more judgment. And also part of this assignment was learning how to actually apply federalism to other issues as well, and deepen my understanding of the national government. For example, right here you see a police officer, and he's a federal agent actually, and basically what he's doing is he's inspecting an area and that's marijuana. So California, as we, many of us may or may not know, is a state that allows you to have marijuana for medical reasons, but the national government doesn't recognize it. So even though you might be protected in California, agents like this guy still have the right to come in there and arrest you. Because even though you may be protected by the state, you may not be protected by the national government. So that's just an implication of federalism. So in order to do my assignment, I first had to identify my topic, which was the death penalty. And from there, I created my thesis, which I showed you just a minute ago. And from there, I had to get evidence, and specifically from the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. There were other amendments that also play a huge role in my argument of why the death penalty should be dealt with on a state level. The Sixth Amendment states specifically that if you have committed a crime and you're charged with that crime, you have to be tried by the state. And I use that logic to state if you're being tried on a state level, why does the national government need to be involved in this case? Wouldn't it be more simple if we just kept it on a state level? And then I got my evidence and formed my arguments, and uh, with my arguments, I created drafts in my paper. So there's a concept known as the reserve power. And in the Tenth Amendment, it states that any powers not given to the national government belong to the states. So marriage laws are an example of this. So certain states allow certain types of marriage, certain states don't. But if the national government said, well, we have the right to define what a marriage is, then states like California and North Carolina and other states wouldn't be able to say, this is what marriage looks like. So that's just one example. And in order to think critically, I had to be able to compare excerpts from the Constitution and analyze constant. So you guys all heard of the idea, we can't be deprived of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Am I correct? OK. Now here's something really shady. The 14th Amendment states you can't be deprived of these rights unless there's due process of the law. Notice the contradiction? On one hand you say, well, we want to protect your right. And on the other you say, no, we have a legitimate reason to put you to death. So now with that in mind, I want to ask you, Ms. Beverly, a question. 
Alright, so do you believe the death penalty is a cruel and unusual punishment? <laughs> yes, I would say so. Why would you say that? Um, I don't believe that humans have the power or the right to kill another human being. I don't think um, that you should honor a wrong and doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I believe with you, but I'm going to play devil's advocate now. So, Miss Beverly, you know, the 14th Amendment states I have the right to take away a life. So, in addition, what do the words cruel and unusual mean? They never said what it looked like, so guess what? I have a little more discretion in this case. So, what you may think of as cruel and unusual is not what the state of Texas thinks as is cruel and unusual. And Texas, by the way, is the state that executes the most inmates in the United States. Over 1,200 have been executed there. Next slide. And I had to use my sources that I had around me. For example, I checked in with my teachers. I went to the library a few times to do a little more research about the execution of people like Troy Davis, Stanley, also known as Tukey Williams, and finally, Mumia Abu-Jamal. He was not put to death, by the way. He was let go, and that's very exciting news for people who are anti-death penalty advocates. So I had to use my available resources, but part of the problem was analyzing my evidence because sometimes I think I've said enough in my analysis, but then it's too shallow. And then when I kept getting my drafts back, my teacher said, so why does this matter? So why does this matter? How should, why should I care? And then in the future, in order to address that need, I need to really start asking the so what question. So for example, in my argument that I showed you, when it comes to the death penalty, let's say I was saying that basically you have the right to interpret the words of cruel and unusual. I just left my argument like that. But I had to say, why that matter? So I need to keep asking those questions in the future. And part of it also goes back to my rhetoric. And I have to identify word choices as I showed you, cruel and unusual, and understand that those words have a certain impact on the writing. And in order to achieve my vision of world peace, I need to identify my similarities with my peers and find ways to overcome my obstacles. So I want to always step in the shoes of others, so I might believe one thing, but I need to become open-minded and see where the other side is. Right. Yeah, it sounds to me, Sam, like in, in analyzing and researching for this project, you learned a lot about how government works, mm -hmm. and how it doesn't work so well, and how it can be dysfunctional. Um, can you maybe say a little bit more about what you learned that you didn't know before you did this project in terms of um, the legal system and in terms of federalism? Okay. All right. Well, one thing I didn't really rec understand was that states had rights. I usually thought, the thing I always had stuck in my mind growing up was the supremacy clause. So what the national government says is the rule of law. And I never, didn't really, it didn't really dawn on me that states had rights, too. So when I read the Tenth Amendment, I was like, oh my god, what? <laughs> and that really shaped my, so learning about the rights of others and the Bill of Rights, really, that's how it really broadened my horizons. Can you think of another, another issue, maybe another current issue that um, definitely applies to federalism that can be controversial, controversial depending on states versus federal? Yeah. Immigration? Can you explain? Can you say okay. that? So, for example, we have states like California that are maybe are more open-minded on letting people into the country, and then you have states like Alabama and Arizona that's passed very strict laws saying that you can only let a certain amount in, we have the right to inspect you. So it's the same concept of federalism. Each state has a different interpretation, and unfortunately the national government hasn't outlined <coughs> what immigration should look like, so it's really up to the discretion of the states. Sure thing. Oh, Miss Um, My question was about critical thinking. Um, yes. I wanted to know how do you feel you'll be able to use that leadership skill in the future? All right. In the future, I might be doing another research paper or I might be living on my own and I have to ask important questions about my situation. I need to compare. For example, if I want to live in an apartment, I have to compare the sources that I have. Will this one meet the needs of my family? Will this be too expensive? How much room do I have? So I have to really be able to use my mind and ask these important questions like, so what? Why does this matter? So I can make the most informed, educated decision I can. And um, just I wanted to connect your critical thinking skill to your 
your growth area, which is analyzing data. Mm -hmm. Do you see how those two could connect, and how would they connect in college? Well, analyzing the data, okay, sure. Critical thinking and analyzing data go hand in hand because many times, like, go showing back to the statistics I showed you in the physics report, I could just look at them and say, oh, they're just a bunch of numbers. But they actually have meaning, and it's important to really see the meaning behind them and ask the questions like, so what, why this matters, and elaborate on it so that someone who really wants to know what you do has a better sense of what you're doing because someone who might have no knowledge of the content of what I was taught in that physics class might look at my work. So I want to make them understand why the significance behind my work, the data. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would you say was the main, some of the, the main concept or concepts that you had to learn before completing this project? Well, and, how, and how did what you learned um, influence your project? Okay, some of the main concepts I had to learn were about concurrent powers. Those are powers that the state and the national government have in common. So. A good example of this would be collecting taxes. You pay state taxes, then you pay federal taxes. Another would also be you have to have courts. You have state courts, you have federal courts. So concurrent powers was something I definitely had to become familiar with. There was another concept called marble cake and layer cake federalism. And those two concepts are that one is that the federal government and the state government can work together on certain issues, like taxes, and then they work independently on other issues, like immigration. So. I had to learn those two concepts before I could really d dive into federalism. And I also had to learn about why the founding fathers created federalism. So I had to really know the founding of the Constitution. And then, what was the other part of your question? It was How did knowing those things support or influence your actual okay. work? Knowing those things influenced my work because it made me realize that what I was taught could apply to an actual concept. For example, I thought that before I did this paper, I thought that the death penalty was an example of a concurrent power, and then I actually had to read the fine print and realize it wasn't. So I had to ha use my knowledge from the Constitution that I was taught in Ms. Hunter's class, and then bring it to the actual research paper. Because I was taught about federalism, I had to also show my knowledge through the contemporary issue.